Okay, so we're looking at figure 7.1 on page 137. Now, we just talked about benefits and said there are different types of benefits the environment has for the economy. There's something like uh, direct use values, there's something like indirect use values, uh, and then th obviously there's non-use values. What this figure tries to show, uh, obviously graphically, is um, how the economy improved after there was an improvement in the environment. So in this example, it's the increase in crops of a farmer, which is an economic is an economic player, when the air quality improved. Um, so let's have a look at this graphically. I'm going to start with uh, naming my axis. This is very important. Um, please do this always in the exam, otherwise you're going to lose unnecessary marks. Uh, the y-axis prices. I see the textbook talk about uh, dollar. They just put a dollar sign there. It's because it's an American textbook and that's how they refer to prices. I would prefer if you write out the prices in full and you can even put a little P there uh, to show that we use P to abbreviate prices. Then at the origin, put a little zero to show that at this point over here the graph starts. Both prices and quantity will be zero at that point. Then the x x I'm going to call quantity and I'm going to abbreviate this with a Q. Now I see the textbook talk about quantity of output meaning the amount of output the farmer has. Uh, you can do, uh, yeah I would prefer quantity to keep it consistent uh, throughout your economic career. The market shows the relationship between prices and quantity. Now the text textbook draws the supply curve curved, like something like this. You might say this is weird to you. Uh, in first year economics you always drew a straight supply curve. Um, this That doesn't really matter, it's not central to, to this concept. So you can draw it uh, curve or straight only thing that's really important is that you first of all name it, always name your curve, plus that it's upward sloping, meaning that for a higher price, this farmer would uh, supply a larger quantity. So as price increases, so will quantity increase. Okay, let me just take all this away. The next important thing is the... Um, demand curve. Now, you'd remember from first year economics that we usually have a downward sloping demand curve, something like this, but that's not in this figure, there's no downward sloping demand curve. The reason for this is, you'll remember, that we said in a perfect com competitive market, the whole market has a downward sloping demand curve, but a single firm in that market only has a straight demand curve. Why? Because they are price takers. They don't have any choice on the price they're going to use. They have to use the market price. So there's no change in price. Um, it's just the price is given. They have to work for the price that's decided by the market, by demand and supply. So technically is the straight price line that's given in the textbook is technically your demand curve. Now that's not central again to this concept it's just how the graph is set up so you understand what's where uh, let's call this not price taker but the market price and let's call this just the price line all right so there this the, now i've set up the graph well good now something happens the textbook tells us that there's improvement in air quality from somewhere else meaning uh, let's say there's a new nearby factory that's been polluting the air and they had to close down. So due to them closing down, uh, the air has improved, the air quality has improved. So it's not the farmer that improved the air quality, it's something that happened outside his farm and he just sees the benefits of that. So he, he ex he's experienced an external benefit on an improvement in the environment or the improvement in the air quality. And what will happen is there will be an increase in supply. 
remember to name your new supply curve. Let me just put that. Yeah. Name your new supply curve something else. Call it S1. And remember to show with an arrow the direction it moves. So I know you know uh, it went from S to S1. Then also remember to show your equilibriums. Initially, before the improvement in the air quality, we were at the equilibrium of E1. And after improvement of air quality, we were at the equilibrium of E2. Now at E1, this farmer produced a quantity of Q1. And after the improvement, when we were at E2, the farmer produced a quantity of Q2. So you can see there's an increase in the amount the farmer produced. So this is obviously good for the farmer. This whole area over here, let me just show you. This whole area over here is a type of an increased benefit or is additional um, revenue that comes in. Now initially, the revenue for the farmer was this block over here. Why is that? Because, okay, this block over here, because revenue, the amount you get in, I'm just going to write revenue, is equals to the price you pay for, you get for each unit times the quantity you sold. Can you see there's the price you got for each unit and there's the quantity you sold? So this whole block over here was his initial, initial revenue, but only a part of this block was his profit. And that's the small part above, let me write that, the small part above the supply curve. Alright, now what happened? Now the air quality improved. Let's just take that out. Now the air quality improved and his revenue increased. Because he still gets price PM, but he now sells not quantity Q1, but quantity Q2. Now sells this whole area, this money he gets in every month. So can you see there was a huge increase in his revenue? And also, uh, there was an increase in his um, profit because now the area above the supply curve is this whole area over here. So can you see previously only this area was his profit, but that has increased this whole area. So, what does this graph shows us? It shows us that an improvement in the environment can have a positive effect for the economy. Uh, in this case, an improvement in air quality had a huge positive effect for a farmer.